What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Molt Man episode. Uh, it is the next morning. Last night I did a little hog hunt with my buddy Jake. So let's go hog hunting for a little bit and then I will see you back here. We're gonna do a little check on the garden and then we're gonna go cook something up for lunch. Well guys, I don't know how well you can see me, but uh, we are rolling up on the first field. We're basically checking pretty much all wheat tonight. Um, and the wheat's pretty tall. It's about ready for harvest. There's about five deer in front of us right now. These farmers have been having these pigs just absolutely ruin their field. So um, Jake invited me tonight to help him out, see if we can't get a few on the ground. Don't have a lot of time. Uh, Jake has work early in the morning. So we only have about two hours to hunt. But uh, the problem is a lot of the stuff that we would normally hunt is all corn. And all the corn right now is like five to six foot tall. So we're not gonna be able to see anything in any of that corn in any of the cornfields. So that cuts our property in, into an eighth, basically, of what we can actually hunt tonight. So we don't have that much to hunt anyway. Um, so it works out for the amount of time that we have to hunt. But all I'm looking for is one pig uh, to take home and eat. I have not had pig in probably a month. So um, I'm ready to get some backstrap and some ham in the freezer. Um, but we gotta put one down first. So we're almost to this first field. We're gonna check it real quick, see if there's any pigs, and hopefully get one. If not, we got a few more fields to check. So stay tuned, hopefully we get one down. Numero uno. Yeah, this stuff is pretty tall. Hopefully it's a good eater. They didn't look just like they were giants. No, I'm guessing about 80 pounds. Oh yeah. Perfect little hog. Little old boar. They're in that mud. Smells just like maple syrup, don't it? One down. How many to go? Mm, maybe six or seven tonight. Hopefully. All right, let's load them up. So guys, this is mainly what we're hunting tonight. Big old wheat field. Um, these pigs love to get in here and mess all these crops up. So Jake had uh, Jake has some farmer buddies and he told us to come out tonight and try to get as many pigs as possible because they are tearing up this farmland. One down, more to go. Let's roll. All that stuff y'all see right there is supposed to be solid wheat. And those pigs are destroying this wheat field. So that's why the farmer asked him to come down here and try to eradicate a few of these pigs, try to save some of his crop. But it just keeps going and going and going. All right, I made it home. It's like one o'clock in the morning. So I'm gonna try to do this as quick as possible. I'm going to uh, take the back straps out of this guy and uh, the front shoulders. The back end is not looking too good from one of the shots so um, all I'm gonna do take my knife come from the back right here and go up um, just go right up the back strap these bore this is a little bore or actually it's not little but um, their plate they got this plate that they protect that protects them when they fight and it is it can be very very tough to cut through this is a really fatty pig so then i'll take my cut right here and then go above this shoulder so i can skin it down on that side and don't have to uh mess with that plate same on the back end and all i'm going to do is just uh, skin this you can feel it there's just a big old plate you just want to peel that big plate back run your knife in between the meat and the uh and the skin. These big old boars smell just like maple syrup. 
If you know, you know. If you don't, I'm sorry. So this will just peel right on back down that shoulder. Come down the ribs. Just get it to where you can manage it and uh, kind of fold it over to where all your meat stays clean and uh, hair doesn't get all over it. So I'm about there. So now what I'm going to do, take that same line down the back, down that backbone. You want to go down until your knife can't go anymore. Just like that. Feel where the hip bone starts, which is right here. So I'm going to make a cut right there. That's the end of the back strap over here. And then you can come up here as far as you can. That back strap actually goes in behind the, um, the front shoulder plate. But it's hard to get to, so I'm going to make another cut right there. And then you can kind of work your knife on the bottom of those ribs and uh, then you just want to peel back that back strap from the from the backbone and the ribs because that back strap is connected to the the uh, top side of those ribs and then to the backbone so you just want to run your knife kind of in a swooping motion and that gets that gets it off the ribs and the backbone when you do it like that so Try to keep as much hair off as possible. Keep everything clean. Also, if you give tension with this other arm, um, it really helps separate the meat. So come up to that cut right there. And that is a beautiful pork back strap. Got some hair on there, but I'm going to be cutting this silver skin off uh, whenever we get ready to cook it anyway so that's no big deal you know make sure the meat side stays stays pretty clean as clean as possible so i am actually i didn't bring anything out here to put this stuff up in so i'm gonna clean the rest of this hog and i'm going to bed i'll see you guys tomorrow and uh we'll make up some kind of dish yet i don't know what um but we're gonna make something good so i'll see you guys in the kitchen tomorrow so we only ended up shooting that one pig um we just didn't see any others. So I'm currently out here in my yard walking barefoot because my feet are covered from top to bottom in poison ivy. I was out here weed eating the other day at the garden. You can see on the other side of the garden where I kind of cleared it out a little bit. But on this side, on the inside of the garden, that is all poison ivy. The other side was poison ivy as well. And I tried to weed eat it down and I was wearing sandals. Um, which I shouldn't have done at all, but I got poison ivy all over my feet. So guys, I got to clean this garden out and weed it and next time y'all see this garden it will not look like this, but our stuff is going crazy. We got some big jalapenos going um, on all three jalapeno plants. That one's like growing into the stalk. There we go. Got some big ones on that one. And then our squash. Each squash plant has like seven or eight or ten squash coming off of them. I still have to make like a little uh, rack for these to grow up on. And there's another squash plant right there. And tomatoes are doing great. Got big tomatoes coming off everywhere on all three tomato plants. Um. I can't wait for these to turn ripe so we can eat them. And then that is that, that plant right there is um, some kind of red chili. As well as that last one is some kind of weird plant as well. But cucumbers doing good. Got a big cucumber there and then these are starting to sprout um, where that flower is. So I'm just... I'm actually surprised that these are doing good because they're basically in the shade all day long. And then we only have two, um, we only have two okra plants that are making it and they're very slow at growing. So overall, so overall I'm super happy with the garden other than it needing to be weeded. Uh, 
chickens are doing great. They're free roaming wherever they want to go. Um, I do have one question for you guys that you may be able to answer about my chickens. So there's a the little guy way out there. So um, they were all laying like between whenever I woke up and like 10 o'clock and then I'd let them out. And, uh, and now they're all starting to lay at different times. So when I let them out, there may only be like two or three eggs in the coop, but I come out but I come out later in the day and they're just like eggs laying in the yard. So I don't really want to keep the coop open because of the silkies will get eaten. So do y'all think I should build another coop for the silkies so I can let these chickens go back in the coop whenever they need to lay or I don't know. I'll leave in the comments what you think I should do, but uh, I'm hungry. So we're about to head inside and uh, cook some of that pig up for lunch. Okay, so I'm gonna make something that I've never done before. Um, and I think it might work out. I want to make something that's going to turn this boar hog into a soft, always tender meat, not taking a lot of time. So what I'm going to do, um, this has a big silver skin on the back. I'm going to take that off, cut it down till you get to that silver skin, and then you just want to fillet it off just like you would a fish from its... Uh, from its skin. So you just fillet that down. That takes off all that silver skin. Same with this other side. And what I'm gonna do today is try to, I could, I could throw this on the smoker, I could cook it all day long. I could do it in the crock pot for six, seven hours. Um, there's, there's different ways to make this meat tender. But I want to try to figure out a fast way to make this meat tender because like today I don't have a whole lot of time. I don't have five or six hours to do this. So what I'm going to do is cut this meat up um, into little pieces, season it up, throw it in the skillet, and then I'm going to blend it, mix it with barbecue sauce, and see how different it tastes from pulled pork. So I'm hoping if I can shred it enough um, and moisten it with the barbecue sauce. I don't think it's gonna taste much different other than the smoky flavor, but I'm gonna cook it in some mesquite Texana brands olive oil, which may give it a little bit of that smoky flavor. So um, I'm really excited about this recipe. I really hope it works out. Um, so all I'm doing, just take any of that silver skin off. You can see um, it is no, no good. That's not gonna help with your tenderness at all. So just like that, no hair on the meat. I already washed it off. I'm just gonna take the meat and uh, I'm actually only just gonna use this half right here. <clears throat> Cut it into little slices like that and then we may go back over it. I think that's thin enough. They're about, oh, I don't know, quarter inch thick maybe. Um, not thick at all. So I'm going to take some of this smoky mesquite infused Texana brand olive oil, get that heating up. Oh, it smells so good. It smells just like a fire. And then we're going to take some black pepper, some salt, and Crater Glitter Red. Y'all can get this at my website, mulletman.net. Link will be in the description. This is the red. I have the fish and fowl as well. Y'all gotta try it. This red right here is good. All right, so we got that seasoned up. I'm gonna let this pan heat up and then we're gonna throw this meat in and uh, let it cook all the way through. It literally smells like, it literally smells like smoked pork already because of that olive oil. But let it cook all the way through and then we're gonna throw it in this little hand blender and uh, mix it up with some barbecue sauce. So this is cooking up. That's going in the freezer perfect way to preserve your meat and uh, this will last for a year or two in the freezer but I promise it'll get eaten before that all right all right so this is done cooking i'm just gonna put a few pieces in here for now this is all i'm using it's just a little um it's got three blades in it and uh it works good for vegetables and stuff so i'm only gonna put a few pieces in here just like that just to see if this can even uh do the job Now 
Okay. This is not working at all. We're changing up tactics. Going with the good old bullet. I'm gonna have to, uh, I may have to separate this into two different batches. I don't know, I think I can put everything in it. I'm gonna blend it up first and then we can add some barbecue sauce to it. All right, here we go. Right, now we gotta add barbecue sauce. This just looks like dried, shredded meat. It actually kinda looks like cat food or something, but I think it'll be good. So I'm gonna take some of Cosmo Q's brisket mop and uh, add that in there. A little barbecue sauce. And then we'll blend it back up. Actually, I can probably just shake it. Yeah, I don't need to blend the meat anymore. Y'all leave it in the comments what y'all think about this. This is literally rolling up into like a ball inside of here. I think I shredded it a little too much. I need to, next time I need to like, just chop it up with a knife. Two piece of white bread. Take some of this meat. We'll take us a fork. Grab some of this meat. Take a little bit, a uh, little bit more of this barbecue sauce. Put it right on top. Oh yeah, I wish I had some pickles and onions. That's the only thing that this is missing. Look, look at how good that looks. Hope it tastes good. I think it's going to, but this is a big boar hog. Y'all saw it? Here's a little bite. All right, first bite of the fast processed pulled pork. Wow. The tenderness is obviously there because it's shredded. It can't be, let me get another one of those. That is delicious. I'm telling you right now, if I put that piece of meat in a crock pot for six hours and then shredded it and then gave you this and that, you would not be able to tell the difference. This right, if I didn't know what I just did with this, I would say this is the best pulled pork, wild pulled pork I've ever had. Cause that right there is good. That gets a nine and a half. For a wild boar, that gets a nine and a half. That is amazing. That's awesome. I hope you all have the opportunity to try this one day. Um, you could do it with anything really. Anything that you're gonna, anything that you could slow cook and shred you can do that way and i'm sure it'd work just fine so um this video is kind of all over the place i hope you enjoyed it i am going on a big trip here very soon so stay tuned for the next couple videos um don't forget to go over to mulletman.net get you some critter glitter get you some uh, mullet gear and support the channel until next time make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the thumbs up and remember eat good